hello and welcome to this week's epic show match Bradley against Cox and this is Zane uh, I'm joined by my co-caster Scott a platinum league high platinum league Protoss rank player one. Rank, rank one, one platinum, platinum. so uh, what do you know about these two players Bradley uh, it's just Scott <laughs> well Bollard Seems to favour Stargate play quite heavily, while Cox is more of a robotics player, which is quite interesting in the meta game because normally Stargate play does very well against robotics play. But it all comes down to how these two players play out their game. And yeah, of of the course, there may be there are counters in Starcraft, but that doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to lose if your opponent does a build order counter. And even then, there's lots of ways to deal with apparent counters anyways. So, who do you think the favourite is for this match? I don't know Zane. It's too close to call for me. Mhm. Mm well, I think uh, if we look at the screen right now, you can see Bradley has a 100% win rate in PvP on ladder, where Cox only has a 30-ish. So, you could, you could probably say that uh, Bradley's the favourite here. But, Maybe, but that, that said... Don't say everything. I know Bradley particularly hasn't been playing much ranked 1v1 lately, just for the purpose of maintaining that 100% for this particular screen. So the players are ready and we'll be going into the game shortly. The first map is going to be Star Station. Uh, what do you know about this map uh, for PvP, Scott? This is the big map, Zane. And big maps can mean anything can happen. We can see proxy play. We can see macro play, and we can see everything in between. So this can be the most unpredictable, almost predictable game that we could see today. Uh -huh. Well, um, this is the ladder version of Star Station. Uh, originally this map, uh, you could spawn anywhere, but now Blizzard's changed it so cross positions are the only ones possible on this map. So we can see in the bottom left position on Star Station we have ACU Cooks! <laughs> and on the top right position on Star Station we have the yellow Protoss player, the cheese connoisseur, he is ACU Buller! So if we look at the APM tab. APM. Oh. Wow. Twelve against fifteen right now. Thirteen against seventeen. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so we can see a pro coming down here for Bradley making a pylon, and he is going to choose to pylon scout. And it seems he doesn't know that the map's cross only, because <laughs> he decides to scout horizontally first. Do you think Cox knows? <laughs> I don't know. He is not sending pylon scout, so he is, does not expect cheese. Uh huh. Not playing too safe. Yep, um, so far this is pretty standard. I mean the the pylon scout in PvP. How do you feel about this? I quite like it. Man. You quite like it? Why? I quite like it because I always just go into their base and just pylons down randomly. We do have a lot of trash so talk currently in chat. <laughs> and we both we see gateways going down for both players. Yep, so relatively standard. And we, we do also rush. see chrono boosts timings very similar for both players right now. Both players insulting the the choice of colour of the other player. Oh, and Bollard takes an earlier gas. Do you think this means anything? Um, well, we do know Bradley likes his oracles. This could mean he wants the gas fast so he can get those oracles out faster. Okay, and the pilot, everything looks relatively normal right now. So, do you think Bradley's going to go for a Stargate this game, or do you think he's going to know that Cox is going to expect that and go for something different? I think he's going to go for a full gate, because look at that, look at that energy <laughs> being saved up on 50 right now, with no gas being mined. Yep, 50 chrono, but then again, Cox has two less chronos, but he still hasn't got the second gas, and his gas was a bit later, so, I don't know, oh, and Bradley just decided to get his second gas. That said, though, we could still see a 4-gate. Do you think this is good to play, or do you think it's mind games? Well, two gas, but not mining any of it. 
Well, I think that taking the second guess is a pretty good move, actually. Like, if he was going to go for a four gate and he didn't take it, then Cox would... I think Cox would have a good idea of what was going on. But seeing that second gas and not mining from it, like, anything... Oh. The fact that the second gas is there means that anything can happen. We have two more gateways going down for Ballard at the moment. And a big mistake here by Bollard. He has four in gas on one and three in the other. Of course, you can only support three in each gas, so that there's a probe being wasted. It could be on minerals. And we do see the scouting probe of Bollard. No. Yes. Bollard's probe got a bit low on health there due to Cox's scouting probe, but it's going to survive and uh, not die. Okay, we have a Zealot on patrol here. Two gateways for Cox. Do you think we're going to see the Stargate soon? No, I think this is going to be a 4-gate thing. A 4-gate? Okay. Well, 3-gate. Well, if it's going to be a 4-gate, then that 4-gate better go down pretty soon. <laughs> Looks like the probe here is going to build something, and yes, it's a oh, Stargate. It's a Stargate play. So we are likely going to see oracles. The Mothership Corps being chrono boosted for Cox. This is like a really good defensive unit in PvP. Like, it's, If he wants to defend against the oracles, it's going to be vital, because he can use Photon Overcharge on his Nexus to help fend off any oracles. And there it comes. Cox is taking the bottom watchtower. Uh huh. Maybe he thinks it is a full gate. The watchtower on this map, of course, gives a lot of vision, but there's some vision here at the bottom that it doesn't give, so there could be stuff hiding here. And of course, everything on this side of the map is completely out of vision. So we see Blink is going to be the tech choice for Cox. This is going to be a, a s soft counter to the Stargate play of Bollard. Um, we'll see if ha if this is going to be successful. There's there's a lot of ways Blink can work out on this map. Do you mind telling us about some of them, Scott? Well, <laughs> firstly, they're a very good, very good response to air units. But Oracles and Phoenixes are very, very quick. You can use Stalkers to pick off some of the units that go straight, maybe miss my code. But it's also a very good map for blinking into the main because the mm -hmm. whole area surrounding yep. it is blinkable terrain. You can blink up here, 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 anywhere. And of course, using the Mothership Core, which Bradley has here, he can get vision, or Cox has here, because he's the one who wants to blink into Bradley's main. He can get vision and blink up. Previously, in Wings of Liberty, before the Mothership Core existed, you needed a robotics facility to make an observer to get that high ground vision, but the Mothership Core lets you get that without having to detect a robotics facility, making blink a lot stronger in this game. Yes, but Bollard is making Void Rays, yep. and Void Rays are excellent units against Stalkers. Yes, they. How do you think this blink, blink play will work out? In on? in hot void rays now have prismatic alignment, giving them massive damage boost to armored units, which stalkers are. So in small numbers, void rays do decimate stalkers. So we see Cox pokes and pulls back. He doesn't want to lose anything. Especially with the mothership, cause time warp. If you overstep your bounds, you can just get trapped. All your units trapped and die. So we see a nexus from Cox. And Bradley looks to be like he wants to be aggressive with these two void rays and possibly an oracle following this up. We'll see soon. He did send out a scouting probe that died. Uh huh. So that suggests he wants aggression. Will he continue? You can see Cox's blink has finished, but he only has five stalkers on the map currently. So really, he can't get that much use out of blink until he gets a lot more. So he's going to need to chrono boost his gates and warp in more stalkers when he gets the money. His nexus finishes. Let's see how Cox deals with this one base all in, because it seems like Bradley has no intention of trying to take a natural base. Cox's mothership core has almost has enough energy for a photon overcharge and a time warp. Uh -huh. It has exactly enough energy now. For both so. spells, yes. Although, I do wonder, it'll be, will be, it'll be interesting to see whether he decides to use them both, or do a, a double photon overcharge, so like, when the first one ends, then he can use and the second one. he's focusing down the void rays. Yeah. He's off really quick. But the sentry, the sentry's dies, gonna die. Yeah, Guardian Shield before it dies. We're gonna see... On overcharge on the Nexus. Yeah, we're gonna have to see how good Cox's Blink Micro is. Losing a Stalker there, that could have been blinked. Uh, targeting the... Some decent Blinks there, saving the Stalkers. Killing the Mothership Core. He needs to pull his own Mothership Core back. If he loses that with 100 energy, it's gonna be big. He holds on to this attack for now. Yeah. Now his Mothership Core has enough energy for a second over... But on overcharge. We can see Bradley is Bollard's current is continuing to chrono boost out void rays. The second one's coming now, a third one in production. Third one just coming out here. And mm, it'll be interesting to see whether he can break this. More Zalots being warped in instead of stalkers. Immortal being produced. That immortal's gonna be crucial for holding this, because Bradley does have 
seven stalkers and immortal uh, immortals are ridiculously good against stalkers and are also gonna soak up a lot of void ray damage. Mollard is walking in almost Cox, exclusively stalkers, yeah. so an immortal will do a lot of damage against those. Cox decides to run his out past Maybe to scout, maybe to do some harassment, but it dies. Alright, he pushes again, he we need a Photon Overcharge, you see it. Photon Overcharge again. He blinks in, will this be the, the immortal correct joins the fight. The out, the immortal's doing a lot of damage. And it looks like all the stalkers for Cox have died, leaving these three void ra giving these three void rays oh, no the competition. The Nexus That's is the only thing keeping uh, Bollard in the game right now. Uh, Cox in the game right now. The void ray's targeting it down. One Void Ray is going to die, but it doesn't matter. No. Is he gonna hold this? I don't think so, Zane. His yeah, Void Ray stops targeting the Nexus. And, the and the Nexus goes, goes down. down. And if we look at the work, the unit count, we can see this. That Cox still does have the worker lead, 34 to 21, but it doesn't matter because he doesn't have the army to deal with Bollard's Void Ray Stalker Force. And GG is called. Looks like. Bradley is going to take the first game. So what do you think went wrong in that game? <laughs> well, I think that Cox did not get enough tech units out quick enough with that once that Nexus was taken because he only had an immortal really, really late and he should have had like two or three immortals when that push came and he would have been. Yeah, I mean, he opted to open for the blink play, but he didn't use his blink aggressively. And then when he had to defend the attack, even then, like, he didn't really use it that effectively defensively either. Yeah, having that blink can be really good if you you can delay their pushes with some micro. Yeah, like, um, if you are active with your stalkers, you can make sure, like, like pick off a few units before they do get to your map. So, like, uh... I think if Cox wants to continue this blink play, he needs to be more aggressive and active on the map with his units. I do like I do like the choice to go blink though, considering Bradley has a history for favoring Stargate play. I mean, we didn't see any oracles, which are his uh, most famous. He's most famous for using, but void rays are also very strong as well. And blink stalkers, while being like. Even though Void Rays do a lot of damage against Blink Stalkers, Blink Stalkers are still good against them once you get a good number of them. And we're going to go into the next map, which is Neo Planet S. Do you, what do you know about this map? In this PvP? Map is, this map is very difficult for Protoss because the third base is so hard to hold, but it is a PvP. Do you think? Do you think we'll <laughs> having the same problems? Do you think we'll see a third base in this series? PVP, of course, being a very aggressive matchup, we might not see one at all. I think we might see a game in this series. You have any predictions for the final score? Um, I don't know. After that first game, I'm leaning more towards Bradley Bollard. Like he did what he's known for: Stargate build, and he still won. And Cox tried to mix it up, and it didn't work out. So in the bottom left hand corner we have the green Protoss, Imperial ACL Colleges, Cooks. and in the top right we have last game's winner, ACL Buller. and if we look at the APM tab we can see still again this game pretty low, for the start at least. It looks like both players don't really like spamming too much. <laughs> Um, I don't think so. I mean, Star Station was a great blink map. Neo Planet S is an okay one because you can see there's not as much space here to blink into the main base. So, given that it didn't work on a map that is really good for blink play, Cox is probably gonna be discouraged from doing it on a map which is less good for blink play. We can see Bollard again decided to go for a nine scout. That seems to be something he wants to do all the time. Like he, I don't think he wants to get cheesed. <laughs> But for a I'm, gate. I'm sure we will see early. some cheese. And also, the gate's also quite close to the ramp. This is going to make it a bit easier to hold against any proxy gates which are outside of your main. Though if the proxy gate is inside your main, then they're going to be a lot harder to hold. Do you think we'll be seeing any more Stargate play on this map from Bollard? Uh, yeah, I mean, this is a pretty decent Stargate map. I wouldn't say it's one of the better ones, because the bases are quite far. 
like on a map like New York Precinct, for example, they're very close by air, but unless they're fairly normal. Yep, that is true. At the at the natural, you can attack the mineral line while also harassing the mineral line of the main. Mm -hmm. They are quite far away. It's quite difficult to. We see Bradley's scouting probe trying to deny a nexus by the looks of it. Of course, is working successfully. of course, you would never make a nexus this fast in a PvP, and pretty dangerously letting the probe get to 5 HP. One more hit and it will die, but the shields are going to regenerate and it will go home, hopefully surviving. Do you think you'll turn around and continue to sky in the main? Uh, I don't think it's worth it. Well, mm, he will. He will. I think what's interesting now is if we look at the units tab, we can see... 17 probes for Bollard and 19 for Cox. It looks like Bollard's decided to cut probes somewhat. Or, I mean, his, he has two extra chronos on his Nexus, but uh, yeah, still. Yeah, 75 energy. Do you think he'll be going for a 4-gate? Well, we thought that last time, but he decided to just go for a 3-gate Stargate. I think, we're gonna, I think we will see a 3-gate Stargate again. I mean, it worked perfectly last time. I think Bollard's probably going to keep doing that until Cox finds an answer for it. And as I say that, there is a Robo in the base of Bollard, so <laughs> it looks like he wants to mix it up already. Do you think he's going to use this aggressively, or do you think he was just kind of... And a big mistake here, we, we, can, we can see three pull the probes here next to the simulator from Bollard, and a chrono with nothing queued. Are you seeing this? I'm seeing He's this. three probes. <laughs> I'm mesmerized by these probes, <laughs> if I'm honest. Yeah, that's a huge mistake. It's gonna they cut. are. They're all facing the same direction. Oh, and oh, they, no, he does going. realize, and they do go back to work. So the first unit from this robotics facility is going to be greatly delayed because they all are pretty gas heavy, except the warp prism, I guess. Yep. And he decides and to go for an observer. Yep, he wants to see what's going on. And Cox proxing a pylon here. Looks like he wants to be aggressive with these two gateways he has. Yep, but his warp gate tech is very delayed. Yeah, I mean very delayed. If we look at the pr production tab, we can see there's a good like 70, 60 seconds between the warp gate timings. So we see three gates and a robo from Bradley. The scouting probe from Cox will die to the stalker, but not before seeing. Did he see the robo? Yep. Saw the robo. Yep. Vision. He sees the robo. <laughs> so he knows everything of what's going inside Bollard's base. How do you think he's going to use this information? Well, he uses the information and decides to put down a robotic facility of his own. So, hmm. <laughs> It seems like he wants to expand, maybe, and just play like a two base versus two base game. I mean, I think that seeing this robo tells him that he won't be all in. Typically, the only all in you'll see off of a robo is a one base Colossus push, but with the mothership call and its photon overcharge, those have declined a lot in popularity because they get shut down so hard by that spell. Ola doesn't have a mothership call. What do you think this means? Hmm. I'm not sure. I mean, it could be a mistake, or it could mean he wants, like, he, his gas was delayed. He, he forgot to put three in gas into a second assimilator. So maybe he decided to adapt and say, okay, I'm going to skip Mothership Core this game because I need the gas to get out my Immortals and Stalkers, because they're more important when it comes to being aggressive. Here, Bola's trying to push, but Cox has a much superior army. Yeah, I mean, he has an immortal on the way. When that immortal pops, like, his army's gonna be much bigger. It's gonna be two stalkers and an immortal against four stalkers as a sentry and an immortal, like... Uh, I mean, Bradley does have three gateways compared to Cox's two, with his third on the way. But e even then, his army's just so much smaller than Cox's. We see a, <laughs> a pylon being put behind the nexus and cancelled as he is discovered. Units waiting outside here. I mean, Bollard must have seen his seen the units near the pylon and realized. And we can see Cox positioning his units here, preparing for an oracle to fly in. But of course, there is no oracle because there is no Stargate on the map. <laughs> I don't think he knows about this push that's about to hit him. Yeah, he he has two stalkers here. Like this is this is perfect if oracles are coming, but they're not. Yeah. And now he's in a bad position and. And he's supply block. Supply block, stopping this immortal from being reduced, forcing a cancel. But will, uh. he, walk up that, will he walk up that ramp? Oh, he picks off the sentry! But uh, the observer yeah. giving high ground vision. Yeah, that's a huge loss. I mean, that sentry lets you trap units, it lets you stop units from getting in. I mean, even though his army is decently sized, like. Ooh, with, I mean, with the mothership core, he can hold that easily, but he doesn't know. Like, for, for all he knows, Bollard could 
have could be following up with Blink behind this, and if Blink was following this up, then he'd be dead. <laughs> Wallard has three immortals over here. This is quite a big army against Orcus. Yeah, and, we, and even then, have two zealots at the front, rallying more immortals across the map. Yeah. Oh, a second immortal pops for Cox. Yep. You should be able to hold this if he has a good time warp. Okay. Time warp. Yeah, no. Very good concave at the top of the ramp. Yeah. Really pushing up. Against two immortals. We see two sentries, one with enough energy for a force field. Another pylon going down for Bollard. He's committed to this attack. And also, if we look at the right side of the map, we can see Cox's proxy pylon from about five minutes in is now being used. Two zealots being warped in. It looks like he's saving them. I think maybe next warp in cycle, warp in two or three more zealots, send five into the main base, and then kill as many probes as he can. Like that's 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 the, that's the sort of move that could instantly win the game. Because I mean, if if that happens, then but we'll have no choice but to push up the ramp. And with those sentries, he can delay that for a very, very long time. He's warping in... S he's got six zealots total. Plays like this are very good for... Six zealots gonna... Are they gonna attack the Nexus or run straight into the main? I don't know. Looks like they're going for the probe. Yeah, no, they're going the, for the main now. Yeah, that's the smart choice. I mean, what good is a second Nexus if you have no probes? <laughs> and Bollard pulls his army back. What's interesting is um, Bollard's made an observer. And he it's been here this whole time. And Cox, if he had seen it, which like the blur, he probably would have made his own observer to kill it. So he probably hasn't seen it yet. Hmm. These zealot. These, I don't think these zealots really did as much damage as they could have. They they killed the cybernetic they did score, take down the cyber core. but they should have been targeting probes really. And now they're gonna kill a stalker, and that's it. I mean, is six zealots really worth a cybernetic score and a stalker? I think it is, Zane. You think it is? <laughs> I think it is. Now he can't really warp in. He can't any warp in stalkers. Zealots. Yeah, but Cox's army is so far away, he can't take advantage of that straight away. And we do see Cox is going to throw down his nexus about a minute after Bollards. So he's he's not confident in being able to win with an aggressive push, and that's probably the best choice because the mothership cause such a good defensive unit Ooh, and not really much of an aggressive one. Observer finally gets taken down. Mm hmm. Think we're going to see a third base on this map? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> this is kind of a hard map to take a third base on. I mean, you can take this, but then there's the two entrances, and you can take this, and this one's probably even harder to defend because it's so open. And we do see plus one being chrono boosted for Cox. Robo Bay goes down for Bollard. Yeah, both players going for Colossus, which is a natural progression from the robotics tech. Cox already has his Colossus out on the way, Thermal Lance on the way, plus one on the way. Mm -hmm, Do you yeah. think this tech advantage will present him? Uh, yeah, he has the tech advantage and the supply advantage. Like, if we look at the work accounts, we can see that there's a five lead for Cox. That's, that's not, I mean, that would be big, but because Cox's Nexus is later, I think that the economy-wise, they're fairly even, actually. But this this tech advantage is probably a bigger deal. I mean, Thermal Lance is nearly halfway, and Bollard's robotics bay is just finished. Cox is saturating is natural much faster because of that higher probe count. Mhm. Mm but he needs to take more of those gases. Yeah, I mean, Bollard here has both of his gases as natural already, and Cox only has one of them, and even then, it only has one probe in it. <laughs> Cox so seems to have stopped making Colossus. Uh huh. Do you think we're gonna see maybe a Stargate switch from either player? No, I don't think so. I yeah. think they're gonna stick with their Colossus. Yeah. Tank. Bollard decided to go for a second Robo, so it looks like he's dedicated to Colossi. I mean, at this stage in the game, when the Stalker counts are very low, I and mean, we can see Cox only has four, Bollard has nine. Uh, just throwing down two Stargates and going into Void Ray is just so strong, because, I mean, Colossi can't shoot <laughs> Void Rays, neither can Immortals, neither can Zealots, and when you go into the Colossus versus Colossus phase, those are the units you want the most of. Void Rays do massive damage against Colossus now. Mm -hmm. with their Prismatic uh, alignment prismatic upgrade. Prismatic alignment upgrade. Exactly. Yeah, we can see Cox has taken both of the simulators, but he hasn't yet put probes in them. I think this is a mistake. I mean, you really do want gas at this stage in the game to, to keep up with that Colossus production. And we do see a warp prism on the way from Cox. You think he's just going to do some harassment, or is he going to push out and do harassment for even bigger and deadlier damage. <sighs> we'll see. I think um, he's probably going to go for some harassment in the main base while attacking at the front. I mean, his army... 
I think his army is better right now. And he has that upgrade advantage. Yeah, he has the plus. Is. He has the plus one. He's ha halfway through plus one ar plus one. He's got plus one weapons. He's halfway through plus one armor. We do see an aggressive pylon that does suggest he's going to push out, and his army is going to move across the top side of Neo Planet S with the warp prism too. I mean, what's probably going to happen is the warp prism is going to send zealots into the main base, pulling the army back while he attacks at the front. This could be a bad move for Koss, because two Kosses are currently... Yeah, but one of them is supply blocked, because Bollard is supply blocked. <laughs> if they fight right now, who do you In think fact, has the advantage? Bo both players are supply blocked. Cox having to throw down three pylons. Four pylons! Because he's so supply blocked. <laughs> I mean, ideally he would warp in the zealots now and send them in, but he's supply blocked, so he can't. So that's going to have to wait. Okay, a warp prism there. going into phasing mode. Waiting for the pylons to finish so he can warp in units. And... Six zealots being warped in. No reaction yet from Bollard. When's he oh, gonna react? The Colossus gets produced, but it almost gets picked off. The zealots, are, the zealots in the main photon overcharge going down in the Nexus. That is a lot of zealots. Those Ze mortals will be heavily tanked by those zealots. Z zealots tearing apart the main base, pulling back. Oh, Cox pulling back his main army. The Arthos pile on. Stopping the production of three crucial upgrades, charge, plus one armor, and plus one weapons. And that looks like a lot of dead probes to me. Yep. <laughs> like to you, Zane. If we look at the workers killed, we can see 23 workers have been killed by Cox. He has a Colossus waiting at home, um, taking a third base. Yeah, Cox moves into the main base with Molar's army out of position. Yeah, looks like he's going to force build. Of course, the Colossus can crush that. If he steps it forward, oh, he will. Okay. Focusing the Nexus, the Nexus but not... Yeah. Hmm. I think he could have killed it and then ran back, but he decided not to. I mean, his mothership core. Where's his mothership core? <laughs> his base. If he brought that along, yeah, he could have killed it. it killed it, a bunch of workers. And if he brought the mothership core, he could focus down the nexus and then recall home and lose nothing. But even then, like he's still in a great position. He's ahead in supply. His army is, I think, bigger if you add in these colossi waiting at home, and he's got a third base. And he has the upgrade. And the warp prism, and the warp prism is still in um, Bollard's main, and he still hasn't built a pylon to power the double forges in the councils. He's going all in with this attack, I guess. Are we going to see a photon overcharge? Yes. See a photon overcharge. Oh, the immortal gets taken down. The full energy centers get taken down. Sick good, force fields. Good. Life level force fields. Parting level force fields. <laughs> yes. It looks like the stalkers at the back were unable to attack, and Bollard has four colossus compared to. Five. Yeah, Bollard throwing down. Still no pylon powering them. Uh, hmm. Do you think there's any way Bollard can come back into this game? I don't know. It depends on the engagement. I mean, I don't he, think he's, he's behind in engagement. Colossus count. He's behind in value, army value. He's behind in economy. He's behind in every way. Pop and moves forward and takes the game. You do GG see a calls. GG, and <laughs> looks like this series is tied up. But you didn't expect that one coming. No, I mean, I was expecting not Stargate. So what do you think went wrong in that game? <laughs> well, I think that both players could have taken a much faster natural base. And the upgrades were lacking a bit for both players. Being on only 1-1 one, one at, at uh, maximum at such a late stage in the game. Yeah, I mean... I think it's interesting that Bradley decided to mix it up so soon. I would thought he would have gone for like Robo play a few games in or something, but it looks like he wanted to be sneaky straight away. <laughs> yeah, talking about sneaky, we haven't seen DTs yet. Yeah, I mean <laughs> DTs would have been good in that game, maybe. I mean, both players did open for a Robo, but Cox's observer was delayed so much. So a DT would have been very useful. I mean, even if you just make one DT and kill ten probes, then it's paid for itself like ten times. And then with a DT, you can make archons, and then you can constantly harass at all stages of the game. Yeah. And you can get that twilight tech as well. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah, archons, of course, are great units in PvP. I, uh, when it comes to the Colossus War, you definitely want a lot of archons to help kill your op opponent's a lot, so you can break in and go go kill their colossi that are standing at the back with their 9 range. And then when it goes into Stargate, of course, Archons are great against air units. They are. Especially with our splash damage against those clumped up void rays. Mm -hmm. So the next map is going to be Newkirk Precinct Tournament Edition. I mean, this is a map that Blizzard released a few months ago, and then it was 
updated, and now uh, the updated version is now in the ladder pool. So this map is very close by air, so I think we're definitely going to see some Stargate play from Bradley this game. We could do, but it's also quite a big map. It's, there, are, there are a lot of places to put down proxy pylons, warping DTs. Yeah. We could be seeing that as well. And of course, DTs are good against Stargate play. I mean, Oracles do have the ability to detect, but even then, um, like it costs 50 energy for them to do that. And you usually use up all that energy when you're using the attack, because it does take energy to attack. That is true. Oracles do burn through their energy quite quickly when they're harassing. Yeah, I think if David came, if you're listening, like, can you buff Oracles? <laughs> yeah, and the Protoss race in general. But uh -huh. this being the Kesper map of the Kesper version of New Kirk Precinct, there are no more watchtowers in the middle of the map. Uh -huh. Do you think we could see some aggressive gateway play early on because of this lack of vision? Uh, it's possible, but I think I think we definitely will see a proxy gate from both players at least one game this series, but I don't think this is going to be the map. I think this is a map that Bollard's looking forward to because he does love his Stargate units, and this is probably the Stargate map. It is. Do you think we're going to see a third basis game? Uh, I said no last game and we did see one, so <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I don't think we will. Of course, though, um, we keep talking about Stargate units being flying units, but the Mothership Core is a flying unit and it doesn't come from the Stargate, so that does favour, like, you can be aggressive early on with that Mothership Core. You think we're going to see a proxy nexus into a mass recall into the main base of the other player? That is a favourite strategy of Bollard, but I don't think this is going to be the map. I mean, we're going to go into the game soon and you'll be able to see how small the main base is on this map. <laughs> I mean, um, Newkirk used to have one of the bigger main bases, making it like a good map for that strategy. But um, the tournament edition has a very small main base. <laughs> In fact, proxy it's really hard to even hide proxy gates on this map now. What about Cannon Rush? Do you think we'll be seeing any of those? <laughs> uh, not this game. Like, Okay, on the left side of New Cut Pre Precinct Tournament Edition, we have... IPO Cooks! And on the right side, we have the yellow Protoss, loser of the last game. We have ICO Bola. <laughs> yes. Wow, these GCS, these GSL voices are really fantastic. Where did I you know. get them from, Zane? Uh, that's a secret. I bet a lot of men would pay a lot of money to find out that secret. Uh huh. I'll tell you afterwards, maybe. Okay. Okay. We do have no proxy gate from either side, as expected. And Bollard is again going to go for a nine pylon scout. Where I'm just I'm just mesmerized by the APM right now. It is it is three times oh, the first game. We do see the APM is a lot higher. Forty two for Cox, twenty six for Bradley. Twenty nine. It is just creeping up and up and up. <laughs> Maybe these players are all warmed up now. Do you think we're gonna see some some more? I think we're going to see some epic multitasking from um, Bollard this game. <laughs> if that APM at the beginning is anything to go by. We do see the gateway slightly faster for Bollard. And Cox going for the gateway scout just like the last two games. So, do you think we're going to see that Stargate soon? I don't know. I think so. What's... A good strategy on this map actually is to proxy the Stargate at the like fourth base here, because it's really hard for them to scout that. Because I mean, there's so many places to hide stuff, and then if you put it down there, then the air distance is just like non-existent almost. You're basically Ballard has already put his probe. You're there. basically you're basically building it in their mineral line, and yeah, <laughs> the probe is in position. Will it build a pylon? And will that pylon be next to a Stargate? Time will tell. We can see Cox scouting, he does expect something, but like I said, this is a huge map, so many places to hide things, and he's just not looking in the right place. Though, if we look at the queue for it, it no, it's not queued up even to go back there. Wow. <laughs> it's queued up to go up, but then it goes straight back to the middle Do you think he's going to be able to see the probe? Will it? No. <laughs> oh. Yeah, may if, you, if you send it up here, it's probably a good idea to actually look where people like to hide things <laughs> instead of just checking the top of the ramp.
So is he second? There is some probe harassment going oh. on. <laughs> Look at that. Five. Oh, oh one HP hell? probe. One HP. Oh, oh and it dies. Oh, that's that's embarrassing. <laughs> you don't want to lose a probe. I mean, probes can regen health, so you should never lose a probe. <laughs> to an opponent's probe at this stage in the game. And we do see the pylon. You think it's going to come out now? It goes up. Yeah, Stargate. I mean, you can see the mineral line and the Stargate without even having to move the screen. That's how close they are. <laughs> and there is a bear down there. Do you see that, Zane? A bear? Oh, I see. Oh my god, is that a bear or something? Zoom in. I don't know, it's probably a Zerg unit. <laughs> a new Zerg unit. Legacy Level 8. Spoilers. Oh my god. Do you think that will have any significance on how this game plays out? Uh, well, the Oracle does have to fly over it. Cool. Do you think it will gain like special wolf powers or? Uh, maybe. Powers? David Kim, please. And we do see two gateways from Cox, no tech buildings yet. And the Oracle is going to be chrono boosted as soon as the minerals hit 150, which should be like five seconds. <laughs> Mothership core, that's gonna help a lot when defending this. Yep. And will we see the Oracle? The Oracle, will we see chrono. The Oracle yeah. is getting chrono boosted out. While well, Cox decides to hide a proxy pylon on the north side of the map and throws down a robotics facility. Ooh. Oh, the mothership core might see this. I Who think. Will it? Yes, it does. Yes, he I sees think it. He'll respond to this. He sends his stalkers He's over to it. This is not what This is. To be yeah. Done. This, the this, Oracle just going to fly this straight is a to Terrible that choice. Okay, it's not done. Oh, he, he, he acknowledges that down. and sends them back. The Oracle comes out. Head straight Where for the mineral line, down. the stalker's out of out of position. It's gonna run it. one probe down. No, that's it. For now. Two? Come on, two. Turned off his attack. Uh <laughs> that did not go very well. <laughs> when you go for proxy stargate like that, you wanna kill five probes at least. You don't wanna kill one. This oracle is a disgrace there is, to Aya. There is a stalker warp in at this pylon. Yeah, I mean do you think he's going to follow this up with some more aggression? Well, we see a Void Ray being produced, so it looks like he's committed to this. I mean, the Oracle, we laugh, we joke, it only got one kill, but it's alive, and that's important. That is. Oracles do do a lot of damage against sentries and zealots. If a fight comes, he can three shot. Oh, this, this mother support might be in danger if Bollard takes advantage of it. Oh, he might get the pylon. Will he no. get the pylon? Will it die? It dies and then the void rate. Will he get the mother support? He gets a mother support, so that's mm, so much better defense for Cox. And immediately Cox uh, cues it again because he knows how important it is. So, <laughs> I mean, the push has been delayed greatly because of that void rate production being stopped. And yeah, I think that was definitely worth it. The Oracle flies back in, powers up, kills two, three, three four, four, five, six, six seven. seven. Oh, oh he uh, runs off. Yeah, that was a lot more successful. That's really bad by Cox, actually. I mean, he knew that the Oracle was there. He knew he didn't kill it, and yet he didn't even have one Stalker in position in his mirror line. He should have had, like, really, he should have had all of his Stalkers down there because he had the sentries, so he could just force forward his ramp in case anything tried to run up. Zane, I'm liking this Stargate play. The Another, Oracle can kill the sentries, the Void Ray can kill yeah. the Stalkers, and then there's nothing else left for the uh, army. Another or Void Ray, another Proxy Pylon, and if we do look at the right side of the map, we can see Cox does have another Pylon. Hmm. Yeah, could we buttons. could we see a Six Zealot run by like last game? Oh, and Bollard moves in, but he misses gone. the Force he's Field! He misses and the Force Field, let's. Four stalkers get up. Two stalkers back here, not doing anything. And it looks like Bollard's. I don't think this is what you want to do in a yeah. position like this. The mothership core has enough potion overcharge. It goes Uses down. It. But, but the mothership core. I mean, he can just wait until that finishes. I don't think Cox can make up a, a strong enough army. Making another new model. Yeah, the mortars gonna be great against the stalkers, which Bollard's army does have a lot of. But those two void rays, I mean, four stalkers aren't gonna kill two void rays. Three, Three stalkers void rays <laughs> do a lot of damage against the immortal as well, because it does exactly ten damage. So mm -hmm. the immortal shields will not save it. See another pylon being warped into the main base of Cox. I mean, oh. Cox has this proxy pylon on the right side of the map, but he hasn't been able to warp in anything because he's under he too much in aggression. The in range of the photon overcharge. Yeah. 
Poor yeah. Spocker. <laughs> Cell phone on overcharge is gone. Do you think this is GG? Uh, yeah, I mean... Those pylons are going to die, and then the warp gets to be powered down. The Mothership Force going to oh. die too. A third Void oh, Ray joins the, the fight. I think this is the GG. end of it. GG. So yeah, Bollard showing why Stargate play is so good on New Kirk Precinct. So what do you think went wrong that game, Zane? I think uh, the first mistake from Cox was uh, not leaving Stalkers in his mineral line when he knew there was an Oracle on the map. If there's an Oracle on the map, then you always want two Stalkers in your mineral line or a Mothership Core that's willing to waste 100 energy on Photon Overcharge. Yep. Do you think if he force fielded his ramp in time, he would have been able to hold that push? Uh, yeah, because, I mean, if he force fielded the ramp, then the only units that could have attacked his units would be the, the two Void Rays. And he did have a decent Stalker count, so, like, those two Void Rays couldn't kill the army on their own. But he missed the force field, he let four stalkers get up, and two of them got pretty far up the ramp as well. And then he just lost everything. And then he didn't, during the fight, he didn't even have photon overcharge up. That photon overcharge is crucial for defending against, like, one base all ins, and even two base all ins when it goes to a two base versus two base game. Will we see a third base on this map? <laughs> well, this map is Novos, Novis Kula Ravine. This is a 2010 map that I never thought I'd see again. This was one of the first maps ever played. This was on one of the uh, battle reports. Yeah. <laughs> Way back. Back when uh, I was a baby, I watched this map being played. I don't think I was born. I don't think so either. <laughs> and of course this is the novice version where you have rocks walling you in. So it's going to be a long time before you leave your base. Do they spawn cross positions on this? Map? Um, I think that you can spawn anywhere. Well, I think I think this can be a map. They will have some very interesting gameplay. Uh huh. And the countdown has begun. We're going to go into Novice Kulas Ravine. I mean, I think this map has the most watchtowers of any map, even to even now. It has a lot of watchtowers. I think it has like twelve or something. <laughs> I'm counting them now, and I'm failing to count them. <laughs> okay, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. No, I didn't. I failed 11? to count. I, did, I, I counted ten. <laughs> ten. That's what I meant. Was it? Okay, and in the top right on Novice Kulas Ravine we have. I see you, cook. And on the bottom right of Kula, Novice Kulas Ravine, leading the series two one. Bullard. Yes, and we have Bollard claiming that this is a stupid map and Cox saying he likes it. So, let's just look at the map quickly. We can see you have an easy expansion right up here with its own Zelnaga watchtower. And then you have the rocks stopping you from leaving your base. Wait, you don't have rocks leading into your in-base nope. <laughs> expansion and then you don't have a rock on the other side. Yep, this is the novice version of Kula Ravine. You will not leave your base for a very long time. And they are spawning on the same side of the map, so yep. this could, this could be, this, this will be, be interesting. A recipe for some interesting, yeah, interesting, interesting games, especially because there are no ramps. If there was a ramp at that thing. <laughs> there would be some very short rush distance, but there is not. We have a watchtower. Yeah, Bollard. Watchtower in the middle. Yeah, no, yeah, six watchtowers in the middle. I feel so sorry for Bollard, he wasn't able to pylon scout this game like he did all the other games. Of course, if he tried to scout, he couldn't. It would take a very long time for that probe to kill the rocks. And some trash talk, Bollard calling his opponent a noob, despite having dropped a game to him. Wow. We see some probes being rallied into the gas from Cox a bit early, I mean this probe should could have been mined twice from the minerals before going back in. So, I mean, okay, let's, let's tr seriously try to analyze this map. Alright. I mean, you can't leave your base, but you can expand very quickly. You can. I'm surprised we didn't see any gate nexus or even nexus first openings on this map. Yeah, I mean, Bollard does love his Stargate units, and Stargate units can ro fly over rocks. So, I mean, could we see some kind of Stargate push? I mean, last game, he attacked with Void Rays and a 
large ground force. But could we possibly see possibly see maybe double Stargate? And That's then true. a huge star Stargate army. Pure Stargate flying out off one base. We could see some exclusive Stargate armies. And if you put down a Stargate on the edge of your base, then the air rush distance is actually very short. Yeah. There's a little bit just to get you that little extra distance. Yep. But then again, there are. And, in the and we do see thing. air weapons level 1 <laughs> being chrono boosted for Bollard. This is either. I mean, he wants to get Warpgate. This is either. This either means he's going for some kind of crazy Stargate build or, and doesn't care. Okay, yeah, okay. Stargate goes down. <laughs> okay. He's skipping Warpgate and is going for plus one air. So we will see some kind of crazy Stargate army. I mean, what you he has no intention of using this gateway at all, so he's not even going to bother with researching Warpgate. And Cox is deciding to go for a fast expansion, taking advantage of how defensive this map is. If you're in Cox's position, how would you react to well, he's decided one air opening? He decided to go around a Stargate of his own. So it looks, like, looks like he's going to react to this Stargate army with his own Stargate army. I mean, Bollard will have more air units because he are, he's going to have two Stargates. But a Cox is going to be able to support with ground units because, you know, he's getting a warp gate and he's going to have a ground army. So Bollard takes an earlier and, uh, and natural. Yeah, okay, so Bollard isn't doing any kind of crazy all-in strategy. He is going to expand. But, I mean, his, his he very clearly intends to go for a Stargate based build. I mean, you would only get plus one air weapons that early if you wanted to use your air units uh, like aggressively. This watchtower is really, really good. But I don't think either of the players have scattered the other out yet. <laughs> um, this map only has seven mineral patches on the natural base. <laughs> seven? <laughs> yes, so uh, of course your your mineral income will be slightly hurt from that. I don't think this matters for a Stargate play though, you're normally... Yeah, in, in PvP, gas. in fact, in all, in all Protoss play I would say, gas is mainly what you care about. Minerals aren't as important. And we do see plus one air armor also coming down for Bollard before warp gate. I don't hmm. think there's going to be a warp gate at all this game. He could, he could kill that gateway and he will be okay with this game. Mm -hmm. uh, shame he doesn't play Terran. He could lift it up and use it to scout. And we do see both players have two Stargates, but aren't really using them. I mean, Cox is only making one Void Ray right now. I mean, he's not making anything right now. Okay, a Phoenix. Cox has a six worker advantage. Bollard making one Void Ray. Yeah, that advantage is going to come from his faster Nexus, I suppose. Bollard has a Void Ray out already, making two more. Mm -hmm. So it looks like the choice is going to be Void Ray from Bollard and Phoenix is from Cox. I think this is going to be fairly troublesome for Bollard, because Phoenix is all very good against Void Rays. I mean, in in if you have a lot more void rays than they do phoenixes, then you'll be fine. But in equal numbers, then you're just gonna lose. And both players do have two stargates. And while Bollard's rushing out his air upgrades, he won't be able to upgrade any more until he gets a fleet beacon, which is going to hugely cut into the number of void rays he can get early on. We see the phoenix. Has a worker advantage. <laughs> we see the this will be. Yeah. Um. I don't think this will be significant because. They both have enough workers to saturate all their gases, and that's going to be the main thing when it comes down to Stargate. Comes the, Stargate. Phoenixes, the Phoenix is flying, and oh. decent micro, not losing a Phoenix. So we have five Phoenixes against three Void Rays, almost four Void Rays. Mm -hmm. If they fought now, who would win? Uh, the Void Rays would win. But, okay, yeah, this you don't want to lose a Phoenix. You shouldn't lose a Phoenix. Uh, okay, yeah. And we can see Bollard's queuing up Void Rays. He sees these Phoenix he sees these Phoenixes and he keeps deciding to make Void Rays. He moves into the main and picks up Pros and kills. Bollard him. charging his his Void Rays. Okay, this is a really interesting move. What this says is I'm going to power up my Void Rays so they do additional damage against Armored, which means I'm going to kill all your Phoenixes and then go and kill your Nexus before the charge runs out. But of course the charge does run out. But it's it's intimidating when you do see that charge. It is. I'm scared just casting this game. <laughs> Both players opting not to saturate all their gases fully with uh, yeah, we have one gas for uh, Cox and none in one gas for Bollard. 
<laughs> yes, <laughs> that's going to be a big problem because you need that gas for stock units. And if we look at the minerals right now, we can see 1,400 for cogs. <laughs> I mean, he really needs to spend those minerals. And it looks like he wants to break out of his base and expand. But even then, he should. You should never have this many minerals. He should just throw down a bunch of gateways. He picks up the mothership core. Uh, some yeah. macro problems. Yeah, mothership core dying is a big deal. That charge again. Charge. He's going for the main base. I've got the goosebumps saying, I've got the goosebumps. That charge indicates he wants to kill this Nexus. Will he do it before the charge runs out? No. In case anyone's confused, Void Ray Charge does nothing against Phoenixes. <laughs> Just saying. And a third Stargate from... a fourth Stargate from Bollard. I mean, I, I don't think this is a wise choice. You can't even support this. Uh, if we look at his gas, he only has 100 gas. And he only has one Void Ray in production, which means he can barely support three, let alone four. But he's throwing down anyways. And we see both players over a thousand minerals. Oh, we see a third base. A third base, but still over a thousand minerals. Yeah. Will we see maybe a fourth, fifth, and sixth yeah. to get rid of the Cox. melee? Cox is transitioning into Void Rays out of his Stargates. Uh huh. Uh, this is an interesting move. I guess he thinks that. Void Ray Phoenix beats Void Rays. But Stop I think. It. I don't think it does. I think you should have stuck to Phoenixes, really. We see a Fleet Beacon and a second Cybernetics Core for Cox to get out those air upgrades. I mean. Bollard got his air upgrades so early, but he didn't get. He hasn't got a Fleet Beacon yet, so he can't continue those upgrades. And we see a proxy hidden Nexus that is scouted by Bollard. Oh. Map hacks. <laughs> Team Liquid. I bet there's a Team Liquid thread now yeah. accusing Bard of map hacks. I mean, he had one Void Ray just flying out there. How, how could he have known? I don't think this will be a problem though, as Cox still has his, his third base is almost finished. The Phoenixes are looking for this one Void Ray. They want to kill it. The Void Ray's moved out. He's got a big army at the moment. He's got yeah, 13 and... Void Rays against three Void Rays, eight Phoenixes, two Stalkers, and Four zealots. Yeah, those zealots are not going to be very effective. He can kill this really the quick. The Nexus dying very, very fast. <laughs> that is very quick death. But then he doesn't have the charge anymore. They yeah, he, he wasted his charge. But that charge isn't too important when you're mainly playing against Phoenixes, I guess. But he also has Void Rays, and those Void Rays will have charge. The Void Rays are going to go into the main base. A Void Ray being sniped by these Phoenixes. Oh, and there's an engagement. The fight's going to start. Charge. Cox charge charges. Bollard, Bollard can't charge because he's on cooldown. The Stalkers, some of them fighting, some of them not. And Bollard wins the air battle convincingly. Those upgrades really showing and GG goes down. Hmm. Do you think went wrong in that game, Zane? Uh, I think Cox was really indecisive that game. He, he went for Phoenixes, then he changed his mind and went for Void Rays, and then he got attacked during that transitional period. He needed to stick to one or the other, and his indecisiveness... Made him lose. That that those air upgrades before warp gear, that's a six strategy. I need to do some of that in my next lot of games. Yeah, you can you should stream it. Are you going to stream anytime soon, Scott? I don't know, Zane. I don't know. I would personally love to see a stream from you. I will try to get it to happen, Zane. Just for you. Okay. I look forward to it. Of course, I do stream sometimes on my Twitch channel, Zane, with three eyes, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Or is it five eyes? I don't know. And how is your... How is your ladder going, Zane? My ladder's going not so good. But I will persevere and keep playing. Will you make it into the Grandmaster League? The fabled Grandmaster League? Possibly. The golden goal of all players? Yes, of course. No one cares about GSL, it's all about Grandmaster League. It is, it is. Okay. Are you looking forward to the OSL? I am looking forward to the OSL, which kicks off, I think, June 17th. Who do you think is going to win that? Uh, I think Zerg will win it, but I hope Rain wins. Do you think Rain will be able to win two OSLs back to back? Uh, I don't think he can, but if he does... I would scream. I would be very happy because Rain is my favorite player. Okay, the next map is going to be Red City. What do you know about this map? 
I know I played it once in a uh, heat mode 1v1, 1v1 ops, mm -hmm. and it looked like a fantastic map to me, Zane. Uh -huh. Well, this is a, GSL, a map made by GOM TV, a GSL map, and it's been in GSL for two seasons now, I think, and it just got added into the map pool by Blizzard for ladder season, so this is a map everybody should be learning. So in the bottom right position on Red City, we have the Blue Protoss player, down three, one to three, but he might be able to win this game. He is. ACU Cooks! And in the top right, King of Void Rays, King of Oracles, Chiefs Connoisseur, up 3 1. He is. ACU Bollard! Yes, and Bollard's, Bollard claims his last game was special tactics. Yes. Do you think we're going to see any more Stargate play on this map, considering just how long the, rush dis uh, the air distance is between these two bases? Uh, yeah, I, I think we're going to see more Stargate play. I mean, all the games Bollard's won have been Stargates, <laughs> right? I think so, Zane. So? I think we've seen Stargate every game. No, no there was the no, ne Neo, Neo Planet S. I remember that game well. Robo versus Robo. But this is another map where it is very, very easy to get uh -huh. down hidden stuff. We do see Bollard going for a 9 scout horizontally and then a slightly later scout vertically. So he playing safe. He's he's really scared of cheese. He doesn't wanna get cheese. He's scared. he's sending out two he sent out two pros before Cox even sent out one. We haven't seen a single cannon rush this game yet. Uh the series Zane. Do you yeah. think we'll ever see a cannon rush? I think we will. I hope we do. Bollard placing his gateway at the ramp. And we see Cox's gas is faster? Because he has extra minerals because he sent his pro out to scout so much later. Whereas Bollard still hasn't taken his gas yet. Yet he has 200 minerals and he's cut probes. Oh Could my god. Be... Bollard's AFK. There's no other explanation. Oh, no, okay. He's not. Alright. He, goes he was temporarily AFK. <laughs> so we see a, one gas going down of, as Cox has already mined 30 or so gas. I mean, his gas is so late. I mean, can he even go Stargate with his gas this late? We see, we see Bollard hiding a probe here. Oh, I know what's going on. Is this a surround? Is this a surround? I think this is a surround. He needs to mineral walk. Oh, it is losing, too late. Losing a probe. Of course, if you if you right click on the minerals, the probe will go through anything, any any unit, and it would have survived. But it, that probe did not do that, and that probe died a horrible, horrible death. Bradley Bollard let his probe die, but he does have a second one hidden in the main base. What do you think this probe will be up to? I don't know, Zane. We do see we do see the chrono boost yeah. chrono boost going down on the side and hit his core for Bollard with nothing researching. Do you think this is a good play? It's too early to tell. I think it's a mistake. <laughs> right? I think it's a very big mistake, and I think that he doesn't realize, and I think that. He's going to try and go for a four gate, and then I think that he's going to build the pylon, and then he's going to realize he hasn't. Okay, no, not quite as epic, but his, his wall gate is very, very late. That's more gateways on the way. Yeah, see a proxy the pylon from Cox, but that's quite oh, far away. Twilight Council. This, I think this is DTs. This this looks like DTs to me. I mean, if you're going to go for blink, you then you tend to put the Twilight Council in your base. Could this be Templars? High Templars? If this is High Templars, then I don't know what I would have to do. I'd, I would have to stop casting this match and immediately go on ladder and copy the build. And the hidden probe from Bollard is scouted and killed. So Bollard's throwing down a fourth gateway. Could we see a fifth? No. So it looks this like... Is. This, is some, this is some very, very, very good building placement for <laughs> Bollard because he has... <laughs> he has the gateway core at the front and a zealot blocking, that means a DT has to go through the zealot before he goes into the main. But the thing is, normally for Protoss players, they just right click straight to the mineral line. So that DT will be just walking into a wall for... Yeah, but does it really matter if you have no detection? Oh, we do see a Robo from Bollard. He does... He maybe does suspect DTs after all then. Twilight Council's done. And the Dark Shrine goes down. Dark Shrine, my favourite building. Is this good timing? This timing is pretty good. I mean, the observer will come out just as the Dark Templars get in, but it depends on where that observer goes. I mean, if the observer heads south, 
and gets halfway across the map, then the DTs will do massive damage. And of course, you don't need to win the game straight up with DTs. You'll need to kill like 10 probes, and then you're in a great position. And we can see Cox is going to expand off of this, so he's not he's not going for any blink all in or arc on all in follow up to this Dark Templar player. That said, though, he needs to send this probe and build a proxy pylon close to his opponent's base because sending Dark Templars across the map delays how much damage they do by a lot. Cox has his own rover. He's taking a base behind it and the war prison. What do you think he wants to do, Zane? I think we're going to see maybe Dark Templar drops. <laughs> Dark Templar drops with an immortal push could be very strong, I think, especially against this composition. Uh huh. And we see Bar's taking one guy off of each gas, so he only has two in each gas, so. Hmm. Do you think we. Okay, we see a warp prism from Bollard as well. I think we're going to see a warp prism all in. I think he's going to load up that warp prism, and then he he's loads up a pro. Oh, what's this? <laughs> could, what we, is this? could we see proxy nexus in Cox's base, even though he has vision of his entire base? Hold on, Zane. I think we need to pause the game. I need to get out a notepad and copy down this build because this looks very, very. The very warp prisms cross paths. Both players. No, well, I would say both players know what's up, but I don't think anybody could know that there's a probe hidden in this warp prism. It's going to go into the main base. Okay, the warp prism from Cox 